Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us for History at Home. My name is Mariana Ruiz. I'm the architectural historian for the Nevada Preservation Foundation. Um, I'm here to kick off the events and to give you all an overview of the Hugh Taylor archives on our website. Uh, before we continue, I want to give you a quick overview of uh, Hugh Taylor and his work. Hughes Taylor's career began in the mid-1940s in Los Angeles while he was working as an architectural draftsman at the time. Uh, it was there that Wilbur Clark approached him while he was doing um, some work with fellow developers in the city. He was approached and Wilbur Clark was impressed with his work and offered him a job to come to Las Vegas and finalize the desert and casino. Uh, Hugh Taylor relocated to Las Vegas in 1949 um, to finalize the Desert and Casino. On our webpage, you can see a photo of Hugh Taylor that was taken right after the casino was finalized around 1950. Uh, and this is where our story begins. So before we move on, I just wanted to give you a brief overview of that. Um, to see, once you're on our webpage, nevadapreservation.org, to see the archives and all the associated uh, exhibits, you will have to go into our programs and services page on the top of the page here under preservation services and under Huey Taylor archives. So when we go here, this is where you'll be able to see the landing page. Here we have a background of uh, the, the collection, some information about the collection, um, and the support provided to us by the Las Vegas Centennial Commission with grant funding in order to digitalize all these records. Nevada Preservation acquired the collection in 2014. Um, we acquired over 5,000 architectural drawings of commercial and residential architecture donated by Hugh Taylor. Among these drawings, we have really important, uh, historically important buildings uh, in Las Vegas in Southern Nevada, including a renovation of the Moulin Rouge. We have drawings for the Sunrise Hospital. We have the Diplomat Apartment Building, which at the time was known as the Wilbur Clark's uh, Palm House, as, as it was commissioned. We have Showwood Bowling Alley, and we have uh, hundreds of custom and track homes that were created across the valley, including Paradise Palms. Um, we also have a few, a handful of projects in Los Angeles as well. Um, in addition to that collection of architectural drawings, we also have photographs and ephemera from Wilbur and Tony Clark from their estate. Um, the, the documents that are found in this collection, they include some of the early documentation of the Desert Inn Casino, as well as the homes in the Desert Inn Estates. The photographs include um, images of very famous uh, celebrities, and uh, characters of the time, including Mo Dallitz, Elvis Presley, and Richard Nixon. Um, we have some ephemera material, like menus and brochures from the Desert and Casino as well, and a few other personal items from uh, Clark as well. A lot of this material hasn't been uh, sorted through or archived yet at the moment. That's what one of the projects that we're work currently working on. Um, a lot of this material is going to be part of Hugh's the, the Hugh Taylor archive because it supplements, it has a lot of supplementary information on the career of Hugh Taylor. So please, you know, keep, we'll keep you posted on how uh, that uh, develops throughout the year. Um, the physical archive, so the 5,000 drawings uh, plus drawings were digitalized, they were scanned and they were rehoused with the support of the Las Vegas Centennial Commission. Uh, through the Las Vegas Centennial uh, Grant Program. That grant program is funded through the purchase of the Las Vegas Centennial, Centennial License Plate, which you see here on the site, which helps support uh, historic preservation initiatives throughout Nevada. So we're very grateful for that um, support from the Centennial Commission. Uh, the, I'm sorry, the physical, the physical archive has been transported and rehoused uh, at the Nevada State Museum, and they are available to the public upon written request. Uh, we, written request for educational and research purposes. They're, they're definitely available to the public. Um, but what we have here are those digital records. So you can come on here, search for the material that you need, and then reach out to the State Museum to see those drawings in person. That would be the best way to, to, to really go about it. 
Okay, so let's take a look at all the information that we have here. Uh, again, on this landing page, we'll find all the resources that you need. Let's take a let's take a look first at the actual at the online archive. So let's open this portal. The online archive is linked to our Path Perfect um, database that we have in the office. This archive basically is just that digital collection online for everyone to see. When you come on this uh, landing page, you will have a few options to search. You have a keyword search, search terms, advanced search features, and then you can see random images or just jump into the archive themselves. If you are not familiar with the work of you, Taylor, I would suggest uh, clicking on the archive button in the upper left, and it, it, it gives you a randomized list of some of the projects that we have online. Um, you can come in here, browse through the browse through the collection. We have over a thousand records. Um, these records are associated with projects that Hugh Taylor created. So those five thousand draw drawings then got assorted into a thousand different records. Um, if you click into one of these records, for example, this addition to a residence, you will have uh, sort of the basic information for the record. You have the title, the catalog number. Um, the collection, of course, the dates that were created, descriptions, addresses, if we have them, they're displayed. Uh, one of the things with addresses at the time, uh, a lot of these projects uh, in these neighborhoods or throughout, I mean, throughout Las Vegas, they were, weren't fully, the neighborhoods weren't fully developed. So we don't have addresses. We might have like the name of the, of the lots, of the subdivision, excuse me, with the associated lot number. Um, and it takes a little bit of digging, but if we have found, if we do have the address, then the address is displayed here. We have any additional notes, obviously our copyright. Um, you can click on the image for the photograph and it'll uh, expand it. Um, and this record, for example, this one only has one image available. If you look at the name of the record, the catalog number, it'll give you a hint into how many pages are available for this one. In this case, we only have one page. Um, the number after, or I would say, yeah, the, the number after uh, 2014.1 series is the number that was associated with Hugh Taylor's records. So these are the record numbers that he gave each of the, each of the um, set of drawings, each project. So everything is, is labeled accordingly. So let's go back, see if we can pull another one with more sheets. Uh, the second uh, record here, as you can see, the Hugh Taylor's uh, record number that he gave his project is associated here, it's 1242, and this has uh, four sheets, so number one through four. You can click on something like this and then you'll see the number of drawings on the side. You can click through the thumbnails to see enlarged views of these drawings. You have, for example, this one is a foundation, the foundation plan. Uh, you will have the first floor plan. Um, here we have the exterior elevation. So we have the street elevation, we have the rear, and then the sides, and then we have the plot plan. The plot plan is usually where we can get a hint of where this uh, particular building was located. So you do have something else. And then you have a lot of the details. So Hugh Taylor uh, at this time was, uh, I believe in all his projects uh, for the most part, was uh, keen on designing all of the cabinetry, all of the storage, uh, all of those really neat uh, built-ins that the house requires. So all of that will be detailed in, in uh, the drawings if they are incorporated there. So this is an example. Let's click on the keyword search. The keyword search um, is good if you're looking, if you already have an idea for a certain criteria, you can click on the keyword search and it's basically just a more of a randomized, uh, well not randomized, but let's say it's just more of an overall search through the, through the um, records. Uh, the search terms, we've been, we are still in the process of adding more search terms through uh, for each record. So for example, if you know of the person that you're looking for, the name, the original name of the client that commissioned Taylor, you will, you'll be able to find that here. So for example, Antonio Morelli was a client, you click on Antonio Morelli and his record populates. Other search terms 
that were associated with the records will be found uh, here. So for example, if you know that this is a commercial building, you can click on commercial building and it will take you to uh, records associated with commercial buildings that are tagged commercial buildings. Again, we're still, we're still in the process of adding all these tags to over a thousand records. So please bear with us if you can find something, uh, reach out to us and we can help you search. The advanced search feature is, is probably the best way that you're going to find information here. You can search by all of these um, categories. So you have title, subject, creator, object name, people, place, we are trying to break it down as, as much as possible to, to make this uh, very user friendly and, and to make all of our records um, accessible. So if you have, uh, or if you maybe don't have a good idea of a precise record that you're looking for, maybe you can go on here and, and put in different search terms to populate a record. Um, we've added a little description here at the top to help you. Again, if you're looking for, um, Let's see, search the place, search uh, the place field here for an address, a street, or a neighborhood associated with the project that you're looking for. You can search for uh, people, again, Antonio Morelli, if you know the name, or you can do specific search terms um, for a property. If you know their property has a bomb shelter, for example, then let's click the search terms and search bomb shelter. and you'll get all the results that are associated with bomb shelters, for example. Let's see, let's remove bomb shelters and type in for place paradise homes. Let's see what we get. We get all the associated records that are tagged as paradise palms. So this is a better way of searching the archive. Um, if you are looking for something particular, something precise, uh, the random image tab at the top, it randomizes all the images that are available in the archive. So if you just kind of want to browse and peruse and see what kind of good stuff is out there, you can come here, click the random, random images button at the top of the page. And then we can see some of the images randomized. There we go. So that is, that is the, oh, sorry, let's click here. That is a quick overview of the uh, Hugh Taylor archives. Uh, again, these are the like 5,000 plus drawings that we have in our collection have been digitized um, and updated and um, recorded, archived into this database that is accessible to the public. So please go on here, search for what you need, browse, make yourself, you know, uh, make yourself comfortable with all these records and, and let us know if you have any questions about those. Okay, let's go back to the landing page for Hugh Taylor. Here we have a few more other options, which are really interesting. I wanna to jump to the Hugh Taylor oral history. In 2015, uh, Heidi, who is our executive director, executive director, excuse me, interviewed Taylor uh, and his wife, Priscilla Taylor, um, and included this two-part interview uh, on the uh, Hugh Taylor archive website. So if you click on this tab here at the end, we, you will be sent to the Huey Taylor oral, oral history page. In the oral history page, uh, we have included the uh, complete uh, interview, two parts done in two separate days. Um, and we've also included the transcript for each one of those uh, interviews. So if you'd like to read and follow along, you'll find it here. And basically over the over these two days in February of 2000, or in January, excuse me, January of 2015, uh, Heidi spoke to uh, Hugh Taylor and his wife and they talked about the clients that he had, he talked about the projects that he had, and they also just dis uh, discussed their, their life story together. So it's very interesting, very in-depth. If you are interested in learning about the life of Hugh Taylor from Hugh Taylor, please go on this website, click through, listen, um, and follow along with the transcripts. This is all really great information um, that we will keep here for um, research purposes, for educational purposes. Um, anyone who's interested in learning about his career, please jump on here and um, take a browse. 
Uh, I've included some citations, uh, some courtesy citations. If you'd like to cite this in your research or in your papers for school, please um, go for it. Okay. Let's go to across. I'm gonna cross these out for a second. Let's go back to the landing page here. Um, in the landing page, another thing at the bottom that I want to point out that is really neat are the desert in um, home tours. So uh, this grant also allowed us to take five um, five of the homes that were originated for the desert in estates designed by Hugh Taylor. We took five of those homes and with the help of uh, Insight Architectural Studio, which is an architectural studio here in Las Vegas, uh, we put together three, uh, five 3D home tours. Uh, if you go, if you click here on the link, let's see, it will take you to the landing page for the home tours. Among these tours, you have Elizabeth Taylor's home, you have Sid Bliss home, you have the Edward family home, and then you have uh, three additional homes that were tr designed as track homes for the desert and estates. Let's uh, go through Elizabeth Taylor's. This one's really neat. So click on Elizabeth Taylor's. You'll be taken to this page. Um, we have a rendering of the plan, um, and each one of the sections are labeled with, this, with these bright orange numbers. If you scroll down, we have a little blurb about Elizabeth Taylor and her husband, Eddie Fisher, when they purchased the house. Um, it was actually designed as a track home for the Paradise Construction Corporation in 1958. Uh, Elizabeth Taylor ended up uh, purchasing this particular model. Um, and we are showcasing it here for you. So again, these, these uh, numbers correspond to interior or exterior views, depending on on, on the location, interior or exterior views of the home. If you click on each number, so for example, number one will be the exterior view. You will get a panel view. Okay, yes, cookies, okay, we get it. You will get a panel view of the uh, home, of the exterior of the home. Again, a 3D rendering of what the home would look like. Click here. It's a 360 view. I mean, this this part, we, don't, we want to ignore that part. <laughs> Let's just stick to this. Um, you have a 360 view of the exterior. Uh, if we go back, let's click on the uh, second one, which will be the uh, entryway. And here you have an idea of what uh, the interior of the home would have looked like. You have a nice little um, interior garden space here. It's really neat. Um, you can see a lot of the built-in uh, planters that Taylor was known for. Turn this around, you can see 360 degree views of this house. Let's close that end. Uh, again, uh, you can see number eight is living room, living room entrance. Click through there and we can have a different view of the living room. There we go. Super cool and neat and it gives you an idea of what these homes uh, used to look like. Again, these homes were unfortunately demolished in 2001 to make way for the uh, Wynn Casino and Resort. So these homes are no longer, no longer around. Okay, let's look at one more here. Um, let's look at the dining room, number four. This is the dining room, okay. Here we are, you can click through. Let's see. And so forth and so on. So you can come on here and check out all these incredible 3D home tours that we've put together. Um, again, that's not that's not the only the only tour that's available. Um, let me move this over here. Uh, some of the other home tours were the again the Sid Bliss home, and then you have the Edwards family home. And each home will be uh, will include a rendering, a plan rendering of the home. Uh, again, with all the labeled uh, 
views that are available to see, uh, as well as a little blurb on the person that designed the home again. And uh, said Bliss's home is really, really um, unique. You have this built-in planter uh, that comes through the living room and then out the rear wall and then back in. Again, if you like are interested in seeing them, we can click on the living room view. And here it is. Here's this planter, it comes through the house, exits the home, and then it comes back through again. Again, these are really, really great interactives for um, seeing what one of these homes would look like. Again, the Desert Inn Estates was a very exclusive neighborhood, um, and these homes are no longer, no longer with us. Okay, so let's click out of this. Sit bliss. Okay, finally, I want to have you guys look at the virtual exhibit. The virtual exhibits we've just uh, recently finished. Uh, we will be adding more, but currently we only have two exhibits available. Um, if we click through, again, this is the landing page for Hugh Taylor. Um, I believe I made these, yeah, I made these clickable so that a separate page would open, which is good. So the virtual exhibits, when you click them open, they will send you to our MPF virtual page. Uh, where these are housed. Um, these exhibits consist of records from the Hugh Taylor archive, but they are, they're tailored to a, a certain theme, to a certain context. So for example, the two exhibits that we currently have are the follow, uh, homes, excuse me, homes with uh, fallout shelters that were commissioned um, and designed by Hugh Taylor here in Las Vegas, as well as homes that were commissioned by women here in Las Vegas uh, in like the mid 1950s through early 1960s. So again, we will be bringing more of these exhibits uh, to life uh, throughout the following months and they will be um, Hugh Taylor exhibits. They will be themed to a particular context. Um, these are gonna be really interesting to see. So let me go through and click through the fallout shelter one with you. You can click on view exhibit page and here, the the landing page is going to give you a background of the fallout shelter, the history of the fallout shelter in America during the mid 1950s, uh, during the atomic era uh, at the end of World War II, between World War II and the 1990s, uh, specifically at the height of the Cold War. So you're going to get a background uh, on the the fallout shelter. Uh, we have history here. We have a few references for you to look through. Um, I've also included the, the, the Fallout Shelter booklet, which is really interesting to see. And this was, com this was created here. This was created, let me get this right, in June of 1951, 1959 by the Office of Civil Defense. Uh, and and it, it goes through and it, it outlines uh, how to make a fallout shelter, a DIY fa fallout shelter in your home, in the basement of your home. So you can click through here and, and browse through the, the contents of this page. Again, this is from June of 1959. You can, it tells you everything, tells you everything you need to know about making a DIY a fallout shelter. Uh, and I've also included a, uh, some images from the 1950s. Uh, to give you an idea, another visual of what these uh, fallout shelters might have looked like. I mean, this is a range of, of different designs, right? So a lot of them range from DIYs to um, actual professionally built and designed uh, shelters. So you can go through here and you can get an idea of the fallout shelters that um, were commissioned at the time. So go ahead, browse through all of this information. And we're back here. <clears throat> uh, when you want to start the exhibit, you click at the bottom of the page. And it's going to take you through each of the selected records from Hugh Taylor's archive. So for example, this one is a residence edition. Uh, it gives you the object, the title, the object ID. Uh, as a reference, the dates, the client. And we've added an architectural context in order to make it easier and under to understand what each of these drawings are referencing. For example, here you have uh, one of the first drawings uh, and this details all of the built-in cabinetry, all of the, um, all of the, yeah, all of the built-in cabinetry for the home. Uh, you can click through and see the foundation plan. 
uh, which actually this is like the most important plan here. Uh, the foundation plan uh, gives you a drawing of uh, an underground or a subterranean family room and the bomb shelter which is associated with it. So we've, we've added the architectural context in order to make these a little bit more legible, more, you know, easier to understand. And we've also added a client history if there's one associated uh, with that client, which is really interesting to know about the people that have commissioned these uh, projects from Hue. Uh, so we have client history. I've captioned each one of these images for you. And we've also incorporated the archive record, which we discussed in the beginning. If you click here, you can click into the archive record that's associated in order to learn a little bit more about this particular project. Again, you have the people in the search terms, same archive record as before, and then our copyrights and disclaimers at the bottom. So let's see, so at the top here might be a little confusing sometimes, but you can click on the next record. It'll take you to the next record in that series. Again, this is a residence building for Dr. and Mrs. Stanley Jones. Uh, we go into the architectural context of this house. What type of house was this? This was a ranch house. Uh, when was it designed and what neighborhood it was designed? Um, we have the, uh, the original plan consisted of four bedrooms, three bath, et cetera, et cetera. We go into a little bit of information on the subterranean fallout shelter for this home. Particularly, this one consists of 380 square feet, and it tells you that every all the amenities, the built-in amenities that it, that it had. So this one, for example, came equipped with three bunk beds, a fold-out table, a sink, uh, chemical toilet, closets, freezer, all the necessary uh, uh, amenities that you would need in 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 case of a catastrophe. So if we click on one of these uh, images you will see the underground uh, family room, and then the fallout shelter is located here at the rear. Um, and this, is, this, is, you, this information you'll most likely find on the foundation plan. Let's click back. Again, you have the floor plan of the house, what the house would look like, and you have the elevation to the front, the rear and the side, and the pot plan here. Um, we've gone and, and, and looked, I've searched through the records. Uh, if, if, the if the house has an associated address, we've, we've researched it, we looked it up, and we've gotten Google Street View um, images of it. So for example, this is this house. Uh, as you can see, it's gone through an addition. This is not part of the original design, but Hugh Taylor's original home is still there. You can see this, this part. Um, so if we have, if, if the house is still around, if it hasn't been demolished, uh, I will go through and um, search through the uh, assessor records and try to find an address to, to link this house to. And we, again, with the client history, we, we, wanna, we wanna make sure we, uh, we look into these, to these clients just so you have a little background history of, of the time. Uh, for example, this client was Dr. Stanley Emery Jones. He was an active resident of Henderson, Nevada for over 40 years. He was a dentist. So we have gathered all the information that is publicly known about him and we've included it here. I've also included a clipping from the Las Vegas Sun from 1964 of Dr. Stanley Jones. So we, we try our best to uh, go through and find all the associated uh, history for the clients. So let's cross that out here. Cross out it here and here. And again, this, this goes the same and I'll caption the images and then you'll have the associated record, um, archive record for this project. So you can have a little bit more information. And again, you can go through and see each one of these records. Next record. Next record and click through, browse, um, take a look at all the information um, and uh, get a good, good feeling for this house. This is a really interesting home. It's one of the most interesting ones that I've seen. It's octagon shaped house, um, belonged to Clark Hartwell and still located up on the east side of Las Vegas up against Sunrise Mountain, still there. Um, and again, a little article about Clark Hartwell is here. 
background, background information on the client. Um, if I find anything else that's relevant, for example, this, this particular record, I will add it here. For example, this house went on the market uh, like late 2019. Um, and I was able to find the aerial footage that was uh, used to uh, promote the house. So if, if there's anything interesting that, that we find or, or that I think that would help, um, I will include it here. And, and so that you can have a better idea of what these homes uh, look like. So we will do our best to do that. That is one of the homes. If you want to go back to the exhibit homepage, they'll take you back to this first landing page. And then the list of exhibits will take you back to the um, all the ex virtual exhibits that we have currently. Again, we only have these two, but we will work on creating more um, throughout the year. So let's see. You also have a museum homepage here. This museum homepage only takes you back to takes you back to NevadaPreservation.org. So we want to thank you all for joining us. We want to thank the Las Vegas Centennial Commission, of course, for supporting the grant funding to make all of these records um, available to the public. Without their support, we, we, couldn't, we couldn't have done this. So thank you so much to the Las Vegas Centennial Commission. Thank you all for supporting Nevada Preservation. Our uh, Home and History event was rescheduled for September 11th through the 13th, so be sure to register for that. You can find that under events and Home and History 2020. We still plan on providing um, a lot of really, really cool and interesting um, home tours. We have uh, programming, the lectures coming up. So please go on this uh, part of the website, check out what's happening in September, and be sure to, to register for any of these events that you find uh, interesting. Um, let us know if you have any questions or comments. I, I will be available to help you, to help anyone through um, the Hugh Taylor archive. If you have any questions on the virtual exhibits, please make sure to, to send us a message. You can find us on Facebook, you can find us on Instagram, uh, or if you'd like to send us an email directly, our contact information is located here. You can send us an email at info at Nevada Preservation uh, dot, uh, org. So our contact info is also located on this page. And uh, thank you so much. We'll look forward to seeing you in September. Bye.